Oh, well, good to hear everybody. I'd like to uh, call to order the uh, meeting of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. Everybody should have a copy of the agenda in front of them. If I can get an approval for the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda is presented. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? I know it's been a while since our last meeting. So the last one that we had was on the 23rd of July. We had the uh, approval, or I'm looking for an approval for the meeting minutes that everybody has for their last one. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All right. Uh, motion's received. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? All right. Um, first thing, jump right into our director's report. report. All right. Well, good um, Good evening. It's been a while since we've kind of been together. So um, um, we're here in November. Our last meeting was in July, and we've had a lot happen since then. Um, I will just give you a quick update to let you know that um, our Chair uh, Jim Wheeler is um, out today, and if you could just keep him and his wife Cindy in your thoughts and prayers. She's um, having some health concerns, so that's why he is not here, and we probably won't see him, but hopefully he'll be back to join us shortly. So um, just wanted to kind of let you know about that. But um, other than that, I'm going to get us started, and so I can kind of give you an update on some of the stuff since the storm, since that's happened. Um, amazingly enough, since last time we met, and then I'll turn it over to Michael and Scott if he has a presentation he'd like to give. So, um, I do have some updates. If you haven't, I'm sure each of you are a kind of abreast on the storm and what it did for the city and your surrounding neighborhoods. But I did want to give you just a snapshot of what it did to um, our department and, in particular, to our facilities, the recreation centers. We were not, um, unfortunately, we were not unique in that we did sustain any damage. We did sustain damage, mostly to our Jack Emmett Recreation Center. Uh, the roof completely peeled off, uh, very similar to what happened at Southwest High School and I believe another uh, school, but the roof completely peeled off and it's a membrane roof and it completely peeled back. And when it did, it damaged the front side of the building as well. So we have ceiling leaking in one and then no really no ceiling in the back half over the gym so essentially it just kind of flooded and rained inside the building and caused some damage we are not in it we have a lot of work to do to even get back in it similar to the schools we have a lot of issues with the ceiling the roof the floors remediation of any water concerns but um we're getting there like a lot of people in our community this is process is uh, it's slowly but surely it's moving forward we hope to uh, make some decisions and go to council with what we're going to propose for that building, but we do have an engineer and a, a facility or a, a, a company that's kind of heading up what we want to kind of what we need to do to get back in that building. So fingers crossed we will get back in there. Um, I don't know what it looks like as far as what needs to be done at this point. We're leaving it up to the experts, but we have some work to do. Uh, our other facilities, the commons, unscathed. You know, water came under the doors and that was about it. No problems there. So that was great. We had some minor damage to the other smaller recreation centers, but I would, in small in comparison to Jack Emmett, truthfully. The only other thing, which I'm sure several of you have, have saw the pictures and were aware that the downtown area flooded, that didn't exclude the marina, Riverwalk Marina, got completely flooded about four feet inside that building, as well as the brand new tennis courts that just got resurfaced and they were beautiful. Unfortunately, like the storm was that next week. So it did cause some other damage with just having water sit on those courts as with any courts, but we're gonna have that um, fixed and kind of move forward from there. So the, moving forward on the marina, we are actually gonna end up just demolishing that facility. Uh, we're moving forward with the uh, docks and the boat slips and all of that, but we feel like knowing that that is in a floodplain, it, this is probably not our last unfortunate storm. We're just going to go ahead and move forward with the plans to demolish that building and then just open space with the new marina and the boat slips. So that'll be happening, I would say, in the next couple of months. We're not in major hurry, but it'll probably coincide with the rest of that project. So it'll look nice when it's all said and done. It should be a really nice facility, green grass, open green space boat slips the whole nine yards by this summer. So the project for the marina, um, I spoke with engineering today, should be completed in the next couple of months. Um, so that's kind of where we sit with the recreation centers and the facilities. Um, I will just go ahead and mention to you, um, we've had some, I guess, some uh, fallout. I don't want to say fallout, but consequences of the storm 
as with everybody, including the schools. Um, I will just point out Melanie Marzette is behind us. She's joining us tonight just as, uh, uh, to observe us. But she um, has had to adjust our after school programs with not having Jack M yet up and running. We've had to move those kids to another location. You know, we have lots of things that we do out of Jack M yet that we're just trying to be creative and innovative to provide programs and services for those kids um, and still be a presence in that neighborhood because it's important to us to be there. So her and her staff are doing a great job with that. Uh, the other issue is our athletics. Our basketball league has taken a significant, significant hit uh, as far as the lack of gym space. I've been before you um, in the past just letting you know that, you know, these are our numbers. This is what we're at the mercy of, and we have no schools that we can practice and or play in. Um, all of the schools suffered issues. The middle schools suffered issues. High schools, they all did. And so we're down to the commons. That's it. That's all we got. Thank God we have it, and thank God we didn't have any issues or sustain any damage to it, but that is the one and only location for basketball season this year. So I will just let you know that we have a tremendous amount of kids that will not be playing. We went from 55 teams to 26. That gives you any kind of um, numbers. Um, so you will probably hear of parents that if they waited, I mean, if they waited to register thinking they were getting in because they've always played or they've always gotten in, that's not the case. They probably did not get in. We have, you know, all of the ages have been affected with our basketball youth league. So it's unfortunate, but hopefully as the schools come back online, next year we'll rebound and we'll get back in those schools and be able to no provide our programs. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so yeah, there's been some definite unfortunate consequences to the storm. We're not unique. Schools are suffering through it. We're all kind of in it together and we're trying to support we provide what services we can to our fellow members in the community. Several other agencies used our facilities during the storm. Um, you know, it was a real strong effort as far as the community goes. But um, if you hear or you have any citizens mentioned to you about basketball, by all means. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know. You know, we wish we were in, we wish the schools, we wish Jack Emmy, we have lots of things we wish we could be able to provide like we normally do to the level of service. But, you know, Hurricane Florence was not the nicest to many people so um but basketball i mean volleyball we finished out just like we wanted to luckily we were at the tail end of volleyball season and with jack and me i mean with the commons being we just kind of drug it out and finished out of, uh, at the commons so we did finish out volleyball mm -hmm. as best as we could so um other than that um moving on i everybody sees winterfest in front of you Yay! We would love to see you if you're able to come out at all this weekend. We have a lot of activities starting on Friday night at the Commons, the Artisan Market. Amanda does a great job heading that up with uh, the Crystal Coast Crafters Guild. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the really artistic people of not of, of which I'm not. So we have that starting on Friday and then Saturday again back at the Commons uh, and then Saturday downtown. Full slate of activities, lots and lots of good stuff going on down there. Finish it off with our tree lighting ceremony and then the flotilla. We partner with the uh, Breakfast Rotary and then they'll kick off their flotilla for the year. So we hope that it's really nice, uh, you know, cumulative day. And then back at the Commons on Sunday for more Artisan Market and then um, our gingerbread workshop. We really are trying to promote local artisans and crafters. Everything in the um, Artisan Market is handcrafted um, you have to show what how you've made it and what you've done so we really want to showcase our local artisans because we have them in the community and, and beyond so do some small business vendor shopping I guess for Christmas and buy some loved ones some nice gifts and then go see all the fun stuff downtown um, shuttle we have a free shuttle, yeah, you know, we try and make it as convenient so you can shop, enjoy the comments, and then take a free shuttle downtown and uh, enjoy the festivities and take the shuttle back. So it, a lot of people did that last year, and they actually thought it was easier. Just park at the comments because if you're from that, if you live up in that neighborhood, you don't have to go real far and you don't have to deal with anything. Just hop on a bus and ride downtown and then hop on the bus and go right back. So we did have a lot of positive feedback on that um, service that we provided last year. So other than that, we're just plugging along. We have lots of stuff coming up um, for the holidays. So feel free um, to come on out anytime or 
join us for any of the stuff. We have lots of good stuff. So, any questions? I tend to talk. Yeah, the marina. Uh, yes, sir. We're going to shuttle it. Is there any way to have some picnic tables or restrooms? Yeah, definitely. There? I think okay. we'll move forward with all that. I, you know, Michael, I'm sure has ideas on what we could do. The green space, okay. obviously, getting grass to grow down there is probably their biggest concern. And Scott's already thinking how much he'll have to mow, but they'll do a great job, and we'll probably add some, definitely, some sitting area so people can just enjoy the water and the waterfront and the boats and all of that good stuff. But yeah, absolutely. I think long term we have some really nice ideas on what we'd like to see down there, but for the short term, I think some benches and tables and you know all that good stuff will go down in there. Yeah. The, original, the original plan was to was, was to use the facility to to uh, to gain some funds for the for the city, so they was going to <coughs> use the to either have some type of. Um, some things we're going to sell or, or bring something into that facility too. Well, to the boat slips are going to be op is uh, an option for lease, and we've expanded the number of boat slips we have down there. And we actually, uh, Amanda's fielding calls just every couple of days, people wanting to put their boat slips in. So that'll be a revenue generator for us. And then long term, I think we really just need to talk about what we want to develop downtown and develop in that entire area. It's, it's some fantastic property. Um, but council really, um, you know, what's their vision for saying, you know, we've had water lots access. of ideas. I mean, exactly. water access is the biggest thing about the so. The city now has another area downtown with water access. Yeah, that's, that's a big great. deal. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot we could do. Just, yeah. you know, honing in on a vision and, you know, seeing how we want to go about implementing mm -hmm. a new park master plan. It calls for a master plan and there's just lots of ideas that we could do down there. It's just a matter of what we want to but right now the boat slips are going to be extremely popular we anticipate traffic you know day boaters we want that kind of you know tourist we want it to be on the map as far as a nice beautiful spot for people to enjoy even if they just go in for the day or they're just traveling up and down the river they can stop in and say hi and that kind of thing the nice thing is is even with the building gone we have a Kerr Street Recreation Center so we have restrooms that's still an option there we have external doors that go to the restroom so we're not losing too much by not having it, and we still have our vendor that will be doing the kayak and canoe yeah. launch um, and the paddleboard rentals down there as well. Okay. So we're going to reconfigure his, not to work out of a building, obviously, but probably more of a temporary shed, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Some sort of racks. He operates out of Hammocks Beach and Carolina Beach and does something similar to that. So it'll be nice. It'll be very nice. So. Any other questions for me? Any other thoughts? Okay, so that was my um, probably five minutes too long. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm well, done I, after that. So. I'm just going to jump on where, where, where she where she was at with the hurricane, and just and I'm going to try and be brief with you. I know it's been a long time, but I'm going to try and hit the highlights of the last couple of months that we've uh, not been able to see each other face to face. Uh, but talking about the hurricane. Uh, you know, the city did a wonderful job responding. One of the uh, things that Susan and I had the, uh, I, I don't want to use the word pleasure, but we were, had the opportunity to do was we were at the EOC during the hurricane and the professionalism of the public safety crowd and the public services group on how to handle that during that event and how to handle it just after that event was extremely impressive. The way they were about it, their professionalism, their promptness, and, and the response, and all of those things. And we can't say enough good things, or at least I can, about Absolutely. the way they responded to that. It was neat to see that firsthand. Uh, from our side, from the park side, um, we were out by Saturday morning uh, working on the commons, working on Carolina Forest, working on Country Club over the next couple of days and clearing you know, one of our, our main responsibilities in those areas are to get the roads clean, cleared. Uh, so people, uh, especially emergency vehicles that needed to be, can get in and out. And uh, that was a priority for us. We were able to achieve that in a pretty short amount of time. As far as damage around our park system as a whole, um, I think for the most part, we did okay. Now, we did have a lot of tree damage. Uh, I will just give you an example of the amount of tree damage we had as we have, we have 24 maintenance workers on our staff. That's not including our Thames. And for 12 straight days, we were on the rails and trail. Chainsaws going, trucks being loaded, nonstop. 
it is not beyond my estimate that at least there were 300 trees down there. And for the anybody that's never been on it, if you went down that trail, you would never know that those trees are gone <coughs> if you've never been down there. There's so many trees out there. But a great job by the park staff as well as the whole city in getting the city put back together. And for the most part, that seems to be happening or has already happened in a lot of areas. Uh, since we've been gone, softball, in case you were wondering, is still going on. <laughs> still getting field dressed. Yeah. Um, for the most part, though, we are finished mowing. Uh, we still have to do it every once in a while, but for the most part, our mowers are, are, are going to rest for a while. Something that's near and dear to my heart, Scott's heart, and the park staff's heart, the amphitheater is 99% done. It is completely sodded. We are just doing some final touches on it right now. Hopefully, by the if not by the end of this week, early next week, we will be able to walk away from that, except for a maintenance standpoint. And that's something uh, we'll be happy to get away from uh, and getting back to doing our normal jobs. In case you haven't noticed, the Christmas decorations are up. <laughs> um, I think we have 100, uh, excuse me, 200 in. 16 decorations lit this year, so uh, obviously you'll see that, and obviously you'll see some of the things we've done down at Riverwalk this year. The Christmas tree was delivered today. You'll see it uh, in the next couple of days uh, get put up and then be decorated. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about is something you may not know about, and that is we are in the process of having a new playground. I'm so sorry Steve's not here. <coughs> installed at Northeast Creek Park. Now that's something that was not planned for initially this year in our, in our budget or in our capital improvement program. We were gonna move forward and redo some of the restrooms and maybe add a shelter or two on the playground side. But what we found is uh, bids came in, expected a little higher, and we also found uh, a discount on a playground. So we went ahead and utilized our money in that direction, which I think was a smart move. And uh, with council's blessing, uh, we were able to uh, buy a new playground for out there. That's already been done. We are just in the process of working with the vendor as well as engineering and setting exactly where the playground goes. I would tell you, I would hope by the end of February, it would be installed. In the next month or so, you're, if you're out at Northeast Creek, and Steve, if you're listening, you'll see Scott's staff, the park staff, will be out there slowly pulling out the existing playground and getting the, the ground prepared for what will, what you know, the new playground and when it's going to be uh, installed out there. So that's great news. Uh, that side of town, you know, that, that playground equipment out there was installed in 1988. So uh, something long past due, and uh, it'll be a nice addition to that park. It goes right in line, though, with the restroom facilities, with the splash pad, and now, of course, the playground. So we're not far from being finished with that side of the park, so just be aware of that. And the last thing before I um, turn it over to Scott, and we'll get to that in a second, is I want to acknowledge somebody tonight, and that is Philip Arnold. Philip's been a part of the uh, city, uh, and he's been a part of the park staff for the past 10 years, uh, but he's been with the city for 28 years. And it's been a pleasure working with him. He is retiring uh, in December on the 14th, and I want to acknowledge him tonight. And uh, a good person, and uh, a good worker, and a much better person. Uh, and I wanted to, to give him his props for that. And we're going to miss Philip, and uh, yeah. but I'm absolutely happy for him and, and the next steps that he's taken in his life. So moving past that now, I'll hand it over to Scott per Scott Miranda Perosi, who is our assistant park superintendent. And you've heard from Jason Smith in the past about, uh, you know, our horticulturalist about some of the things we do from the landscaping perspective and how we are, we're, we're, where we were, where we are, and where we're going sorts of things. And, and Scott's going to come here today and talk to us a little bit about the park side of the house and, and some of those things. So, Scott? Well, thanks for having me. And... Uh... We just did a small PowerPoint just to kind of show what we've been doing over the last few years as far as what, what we, where we were, where we are, where we're going, and just to kind of, you know, show what we have been doing on our side as far as that's concerned. So, here we go. This is an overview and a roadmap of what, what we're about and the daily activities of the parks. 
Okay, this is Phillips Park. This is a park shelter that has been there for many years. Uh, well maintained, but it's a, a shelter that uh, has been well used, and we have them at Brook Valley, the Commons, and Wilson Bay. They're, they're wood with a metal roof or a shingle roof, and they're well maintained, and they've done well for us. We just wanted to... Now, this is the shelters that we moved to, which are Richard Ray, Sturgeon City, and a Jack and Yet. They're white metal posts with a metal roof. They're easier to maintain, to power wash, to paint, and to keep up for our citizens that use in there. On a weekly basis, we have reservations and they're well used by all of our citizens. The next slide we have is the bathrooms. This is a Georgetown bathroom with cinder block with only one stall and a sink. And they're very usable, but we we're moving forward as our new standard is this is the landing. There's a landing bathroom that has storage rooms on either side, water fountains, uh, and then multiple stalls and very nice with beautiful landscaping that the landscaping guys do. And it's just a more, um, a nicer experience as you go into the bathrooms. And that's our new standard. We have them at the landing. Northeast Creek is a new bathroom and uh, Jack. Now this is uh, small stuff, but these are benches. We're in the process of up trying to change out benches. It's a process over years. These are benches that were, that was at uh, Northeast Creek and then we're switching to the bench on the right side. It's just a process that we're doing. Each year we look at certain areas and try to replace certain benches and it's over a certain amount of time. And a little bit more heavy duty on the right, a little bit more natural looking and it's something that we feel is gonna be better for long-term success in our parks. Water fountains, which we all know were brought up many a times about not working, breaking and all that. We're just about finished with those. We have one more to install and they'll all be replaced so just a reminder that, um, that we did all this work. And another thing I want to say, that the park staff did all this work. We took all the old ones out, reinstalled all the new ones, made sure they're level, and they're all working. So I commend my staff on all the work they do because we don't, we try not to sub out any work. We do all our work basically internal, no matter if it's landscaping on that side or the parks, water fountains, and some other stuff you'll see here that all our guys with our great staff were able to do this past year. This is not a real exciting, but trash cans. It's something, <laughs> it's something that's important to me, but it's, you know, we're trying to upgrade and, and change out when they get older. And on the left is the trash cans at the Landing, uh, Riverwalk Park, and the, the amphitheater. We just installed seven trash cans there. They're black, but the same style as the one on the left. And a little bit more formal looking, and we put those in those areas. The one on the right are all other parks. It has the lid on it where keep keeps squirrels out as best we can, some bugs, and it's just better uh, experience for the customers and for our guys when they open up the trash cans. It doesn't keep all the rain out, but it does keep out some. It's easier to change out, which we do on a daily basis. Playground borders, which is something that we are, you know, old ones are on the left. They've been there for a long time and they've cracked. They're like, they're plastic with, with uh, stakes. The ones on the right are rubber. They're a rubberized surface that is flexible that we can bend and you install. And it's a more finished look and it's easier to maintain. And for long-term success, we're in the process of changing all the uh, playgrounds to that. So then when we hopefully do rubberized surface, they'll stay there and just add to the experience. Now, this is work that was done about two years ago. It's a Georgetown Trail. And now we have the, the exercise equipment. We have nine pieces of equipment there that are used. You can walk around. It's about a half mile and do, that's a skier. We have a little balance beam. We have a chest press and some other stuff. And... It's been well received down there and, and well used since it was installed. Now, this is the playground that was installed there two years, two years ago. It's a hybrid, they call this. It has the ropes that are like at Jack, I mean at Wooten Park. And then it has the slides, which we always hear the kids love the slides. So it has the combination of both, has the rubberized surface and the borders. So it's, uh, it's done very well, it seems to be used uh, quite often and it's, hopefully the standard as far as the rubberized surfacing moving forward. Now this is Jack and Matt, which you've seen, but it's just a, it's a competitive high school field <coughs> that is well maintained with, yeah, that's before the splash yeah, pad. Yeah, so that's, uh, but it has the warning tracks, which are uh, vital uh, for safety as far as giving the players um, a 
A warning. A warning. <laughs> a warning of what they're of before they hit the fence. And we've actually installed those at Northeast Creek and at the Commons, youth and adult fields. We cut out the sod and installed the warning tracks in all those fields in the last two years. Now this field here doesn't look like this right now since the storm, but I still wanted to put that in there as far as we did a lot of work as far as getting that field back into a competitive level field. We put we cut out the base pass, made it into a 90 foot field, and uh, athletics put fence around it so they can play games. It doesn't look like that now, but we're hopefully going to start working on that sometime in the spring and try to get it back to a playable level sometime late spring. Um, the grass is growing. We might just need to, you know, get in there and take out the top layer of mud that was brought in from the four foot of water that was over it. But uh, we're going to see how that work moves forward, and we're going to try to get that back in shape here shortly. Now, these are batting cages that were installed at the youth fields at the Commons. A contractor came in and installed the poles, but uh, the park staff at the Commons and did everything else. We went up top and put the wires, hung the ropes, installed the borders and the brick track for the players. And uh, it's been well received, and the guys did a great job. Another thing they're able to do without, only thing we couldn't do was the poles, but we did all the other work. And uh, they actually made it through the storm pretty well. One little piece came apart, and that was it. We are able to fix that, and they're up and running and being well used at this point. Splash pad. This the splash pad installed, but we installed the sitting walls around it. The sitting wall. At, there's one at Jack and Yet and one at Northeast Creek. That was done by Park staff also. Um, they're around. It was a twofold. It keeps. It gives the parents and all the citizens a place to sit, and it also kind of keeps some of the grass and the pine straw and debris from getting on the splash pad, which then in turn makes it work better. So the filter system doesn't get as much stuff in it. We're having at Jack and Jack and Yet especially. There was. Kids were going back and forth to their parents so much, they were running back and forth, bringing grass in, and it kind of caused some issues. So this kind of helps with that, where they only go in and out at one spot. And uh, the people love to sit on them, and it kind of keeps them where they're just chilling out and enjoying this space. And like I said, that was all these walls were done by park staff only. Uh, we, the guys at Northeast Creek, I showed them what to do uh, as far as how to do it. We glued those, uh, each piece individually. It was a very, we wanted to make sure it was very safe so that when people were sitting, they were there. So we put glue on each individual block to the concrete, then each level we added a glue, and each piece was picked up, glued, put back down, and tapped. A little bit tedious, but we had to make sure it was safe for our public. And this is just a picture of the Northeast Creek bulkhead that was installed, just kind of show what it, was, what it looked like before it was done as they were working. And this is the finish at the end where they did all new uh, woodwork, new sods, and walkways, and it's been, uh, every time I go there, people are there fishing and just hanging out, and it's really well received and well used uh, by our citizens. Now here's the amphitheater, which when Susan had some, and, and Nick and those had some uh, concerts this summer, as you can tell, there's many people there. Now the sod is finished everywhere, so it looks even better, but it's just to show that, you know, these walls were installed again by our staff we couldn't do what we do without the 24 guys and the attempts that we have doing all the work um, i had the experience of doing it and i was able to they're eager to learn eager to work to learn a new a new trade kind of and we installed this this was which on the next page shows how much was done there was 130 tons 57 stone because how wet the amphitheater was which we know when it was being built had problems we put two by two foot uh, footers in, which when we dug down two feet, two feet wide, and put 57 stone to hold water and make sure it would never move on us. And then, and that's four of those, and then we went and did uh, a little bit of stone for the wall to go on, and then we built the, the wall accordingly, which is 100 square, 1,000 square feet, which is 500 linear feet by two feet high, and then the caps, and then we put built steps in the middle. But that was all done internally by the guys at the Commons, some guys from landscaping to help. It was a, a group effort. But it turned out very well, and guys really didn't want to mess with wall after we did this. This was <laughs> such a good project, but it turned out well, and it's been a, a, a valuable thing for us to do for the city to get something like this and for us to be able to do it for them. Also on the backside, these were the amphitheater steps that we installed. They're eight by eights that were cut in the eight-foot sections or four-foot sections and going all the way up. We did two sets, one on the front side, one on the back. 
dug out with a with the uh, a mini excavator and we installed all those. They're put with nails and rebarb and all that. They're never going anywhere, I promise. And uh, it just gives a nice uh, entranceway to the back, which is finished up now with the lights that were installed by FMS. And, you know, it really was a group effort there. And uh, we're going to be, like Michael said, very proud and very glad that we're about finished and it can be used and, <laughs> and be done with it as far as that's concerned. <laughs> um, upcoming projects, which the playground borders I showed you, we're going to try to install those. In all the parks, you know, slowly but surely take out the old ones, you know, reinstall them with the sand so that hopefully in the future where we put bounded rubber, the borders will always be there. They'll just have to take out the sand and put the, and put that there. Uh, the new playground at Northeast Creek Park and the sitting wall is already done at the splash pad. But there's one more um, slide, which is the playground that's at Northeast Creek. Okay, this is the projected playground that we're installing there. As you can see on the left, um, that's a ramp. It's an inclusive playground, which means wheelchairs can go up the ramps, go down the slides, can go all the way up, all the way to the other side. And then if they had to, they can climb up the stairs and go down the big slides. But there's multiple things that are inclusive, which is uh, very first positive. First of its kind in Jackson. Yeah, first of its kind. And we're very uh, happy that it's done. And it's completely done in a rubberized surface. So when you get down, there's no sand. You can go to the slides and uh, do all these things. And it has multiple... Uh, aspects to it. The cool thing about it on the, on the swings, which is in the back side, there's a new swing we're installing, which you'll have the parent here and the baby can sit in the baby chair and you can swing together. So that's the first face ones we'll face. have here, face to face as you swing. So I think that will be a good experience for our mothers and the babies and the fathers as they do that, something we don't have anywhere else in the city at this point. And they have the little climbing area. There's multiple things. It's a you know, it's somewhat of a hybrid because it does have the ropes and it has these things over here you can climb on. But the, the big thing is the ramps that you can go from the beginning all the way to the end, you know, and it's accessible and inclusive for all ages and, and types. And that was it from, from my end here. I just wanted to kind of give an update. Do you have any questions yeah. for me? How many people will the amphitheater hold? Well, it's with the wall, we had about six of us at a time working. Um, cause we, we had, we had one guy on the, the mini excavator digging and what we did, we had him dig, we did one level at a time and we dug down and then we put like ground cover, no, the black fabric with the green lines. We had to put that inside to keep the dirt out of the rock and then we filled it up. And then I did most, a lot of the wall work to start with because I was experienced and I have the, the certification and the, you know, that, but I showed guys and by the end they were able to start doing it. And then, then we glued. So we had different guys in different levels as far as that. And then we had probably six or eight lane sod also. Right. But I think your question was yeah, how many exactly. will yeah. hold? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Susan, correct me if I'm around 500-ish. Yeah. So um, we had an event out there, a really popular event. And I want to say we probably had three to 400. I think we've projected in the seated areas that much. But now that the sod is done on the outskirts and on the top, I would definitely say five, five or more easily, just depending on what type of event it is and how spread out they want to be. Not every, every aspect is going to be the best, the best, yeah. but comfortably we had a fantastic event, an outdoor play that did, that had a huge crowd. We had a couple of concerts that had a huge crowd and just in the seated area, it was about three, three to four. We'll see. We plan to pack it out this summer for yeah. sure. So question. Yes. Mosquito traffic out there. How do you all deal with that? You make a phone call to <laughs> the mosquito <laughs> department. Oh, yeah. The street, public service right. will take care of it. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. We have a phone There's people spray. over there. Absolutely. And there usually is a pretty decent breeze. I'll be on, over there yeah, sometimes. So we do. Maybe they just don't like me, but I, I didn't get bit too much out there, thankfully. So but you yeah. stay out here during that. But yeah, I mean, streets is the department we call if we yeah, have an issue. They sure. take care of us. Uh, most before all of our events, they come out and spray. Mm -hmm. they, they, they take Any other questions? So I think what you've learned tonight is something you've heard is, uh, and, uh, and something we're really proud of in, on the park side of the house, and, and, and Susan has this on her side of the house, but um, we have a lot of talented people on the park staff and 
what that translates to in the big picture is a savings of money. The things that we're doing in the parks, just like in the landscaping side, the hard, what we call hardscapes, those are not cheap if you hire people to do it, you know. By us doing those things, using the expertise we have, the talent that we have on staff, we get a big bang, the city gets a big bang for its dollar, and that's, that's a good thing. And uh, we're going to continue to do those things moving forward. If you had to estimate how much money you saved, that would be a good tool that you could well we do to, that from time to time i think i think we had estimated and scott you might want to help me with this that i think we had estimated the walls would have cost around seventy thousand yeah. dollars seven or at least seven to a hundred because yeah. of the because of the what i said about the, the it, structure underneath. not that we don't pay for labor because we do but we're paying for labor Regardless. 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 So really, we, we try and fit it, and that's why we jo we were jokingly saying we got to get away from the amphitheater, because we already have jobs. But it is cost-effective from the city seat for us to take on any of those jobs. And we, we talk about the amphitheater right now, but, but we talk about the sitting wall at Northeast Creek. We talk about the police memorial, which was done by the majority of it was done by not just the park staff but by FMS and using the talent we have and fitting it in and tr making it work because in the big picture there is a big bang uh, in dollars that uh, there's, uh, there's a large savings when you're doing when you're able to do those sorts of things and and do it to the standard I think that's as right. important as anything do it to a standard that that we have in Jacksonville uh, as a whole as a, as a city not just as a parks park, as a city. Great question. Thank you, Joe. All right. All right. Next thing is our council liaison report. So, Councilman Jackson, do you have anything for us today? Well, the only thing I got to say is that you guys do an excellent job. Um, I hate that the Jack Amy F was affected, and I know you all moved a lot of programs around as a result of it and making the best with what you got. Going back to the skills, it's like that's priceless, unfortunate. We don't have an endless budget to help pay for folks because you can't pay for certain skills. You just can't do it. But we definitely appreciate what what you guys do. Also, um, I was here making text messages to a, a guy that's over some facilities. Um, I want to sit down and talk to him either Thursday or Friday. Okay. And I want you to give me those numbers concerning what's been affected. And we can see what we can do, you know. I'll, he said, "We'll we'll sit down." I know they have certain rules, sure. um, based on the type of facility it is, but we'll see what we can pull Just off. Okay. That's great. Thank right. you. Appreciate that. Other than that, uh, that's it. Okay. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, planning advisory board, uh, Mr. Spring. Well, um, it's going to be short because I haven't <laughs> had many meetings. <laughs> I think it's going to be some kind of a record there. I'll be chairman, and I think I may have like three meetings. <laughs> um, uh, in October, we met and discussed uh, and approved the Verizon Wireless Tower, so you can get a little better cell phone service. Uh, and hopefully, this is the one near Georgetown, and hopefully, it'll take care of that dead spot in Verona mm -hmm. that we all know and love. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, in the development review, um, the Gateway Marketplace, uh, that's the area where Publix is going to be. Uh, they've they've re redone the um, site plan, and they'll have, uh, you know, of course, the major grocery store. They'll have two junior anchors. Um, you can guess what kind of stores would be there, and then four other tenant spaces. So that may be some, that may come about uh, some shifting. Um, I know right now the, the mall is going through some struggles now and they you know people just have a lot of rebuilding to do but they'll do it that's it <clears throat> next thing we have is our uh, park reports mr ross uh went out to wooden park after the hurricane and a couple ways you can say it <laughs> one was unsafe and i guess the best Trees were all over everywhere, and uh, it was terrible. And I uh, went back a few weeks later, and the staff was out there working, just as happy as they could be, working hard. Talked to a couple of them and told them what a great job they had 
done and what when they what they were doing. And uh, I went out there um, last week, and uh, it's amazing. It was just like the storm never never hit. Uh, they I found. The water fountain was great. The water fountain is doing great. It's still standing. <laughs> still looks new. Works. But uh, the bench, one of the benches is this, this the side of the basketball court. And that brown one that mm -hmm. you showed on it. It's kind of uneven, as sturdy as it can be. It's not like it's caving in or somebody's going to fall off, but it's it's crooked. Like it's just knocked down, but it's still okay. one I'll thing. Just look at it, it's, it's amazing. It's, you would think it would be crashed in or pushed in, but it's not. And uh, I found a water faucet running in the bathroom. And of course the water faucet was not one of those easy ones where you turn it on and off. I had to look at it and kind of figure it out. And <laughs> I finally figured it out, turned that off. But uh, other than that, I mean, there's, you can't, give these people enough credit, these workers uh, that did such a good, work for the city, that did such a great job, great attitudes. No, they weren't complaining at all, just going and from where that park was after the hurricane from where it is today, it's just amazing. Uh, you can do that much work with that many trees down and you look at it and you say, well, this, there's no need to have this park anymore because it'll never get it'll never get it right or the kids are going to kill themselves on, on these trees that are fell down. This is not going to work. And to have all that look the same and the equipment, you know, still be there, workable. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So I can't say enough about the staff. They really... In my view, a number one professional told them that, and uh, just a great job. They, Thank the you. City we'll pass that very, on. City should be very proud of. I mean, these guys really know what they're doing, and they they do it well. They deserve a lot of credit. All right. Sorry, Lord. Yeah, just to piggyback what Mr. Ross was saying, the staff. They're probably more highlighted and out in public than the other divisions right. that are in Jacksonville, but they've always been uh, top notch whenever I run into them. Um, do we have any equipment at all that was damaged? I know the buildings, but during the hurricane, because I did equipment as we like fences. playground. We had fences. No, we had some fences at lights, Northeast Creek. Ball field lights. Okay. They all uh, like shining in the woods. Stuff we really got worried about two trees fell so around them and next to them, like at Georgetown, we had a lot of stuff fall, but nothing on the playground That's or right. nothing on that. I was just wondering, I didn't see anything. But yeah. uh, Richard Ray, um, you know, the damage before, during the hurricane, after the hurricane, it was all cleaned up. Sunday I went out there, there was kids playing around, so it, it's, it's in decent condition. And of course, we all heard about Jack and yet um, the gentleman was out there today picking up the trash and just going about his business. But you talked about the trail. I did the remembrance run. I think yeah. I did not do it. Okay. I but I can tell you it was clean as night, but you could see where stuff had been fallen and trees chopped down. I was just upset the city didn't call me for my mad chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some down pats. So make sure you call me next time. Well, I, and I, I got to say this. We did have people in the community call yeah. us and say, hey, I've got a chainsaw. Do you mind if you nice. want me to come out and help? And why we appreciate that. We, we felt like it. While we appreciate your offer too, we do feel like it's best. They even bought a brand new chainsaw. I <laughs> Sorry, honey, if you're watching. <laughs> Thank you. He didn't know it was Maybe going next to. time. Keep that in mind. He will so. be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then, if, if need be, I can take over Northwoods Park for Mr. Wheeler while he's out. Because I go by that. Great. That'd be nice. So I'll yeah, add that to my. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Spring, you're up again. Um, I, I can only echo the job that everybody's done. It's, it's, it's really amazing, but uh, uh, I wish I'd gotten a picture of Phillips Park when it was a water park, because <laughs> it was amazing to see the water all the way up to the parking lot. And I'm going like, oh, I just wish I'd got a picture of that. But the water went back and everything dried out and it looks good again. And uh, no problem with Phillips Park. I, I, 
since we're not going to really do anything with that, or do you know if there are any plans to do anything with the well, restroom I, out there? I, with the restroom? Well, I think that, again, the biggest thing at Phelps Park is it sits on a landfill. Mm -hmm. And until an environmental study is completed. Until the state closes it. Officially. Yeah, which would mean they'd come in, study it, and then close the park after any uh, suggestions from the study were completed. Um, that would be probably when the city will move forward on that park. If the city chooses to move forward before that study is done, they run the risk of taking on anything that happens. So if the state does it and they identify these four things that need to be done before the park can be closed, my understanding is the state will fund those projects. If the city in turn decided not to wait, and said, we don't think anything's wrong, we're going to move forward, and something happens, that, that cost now is on the city. Well, I guess my question is, is, at what point does the condition of what we've got, we're either going to tear it down or replace it? For well, example, the picnic shelters, um, well, it, which are heavily used. Right, yes. yes. and I, yes. think, I think that's a great example. Um, the picnic shelter is heavily used, so we wouldn't want to tear it down yet. Um, the bathrooms are used. Trust me, they're used because if we close them, we get calls about it. Um, so the risk we run, and what, really what I'm telling you is this, you can't dig down but like a foot. And then once you dig down past that, you are running the risk now of taking on whatever you find, whatever comes up. And um, so without saying it any differently, we can do things on the surface. Unfortunately, buildings, bathrooms aren't, aren't just on the surface, they're under the ground. And, and, and we that's, are... that's, that's where we're a little stuck. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have decided to do with the bathrooms is uh, not to put a lot of money into them because ultimately we do know they're coming down. So we don't want to sink a lot of money into them. But, you know, if a door breaks and it needs a new door, the commode, things like that, we'll keep yeah. them at the current level. We just don't want to get too involved in fixing them up because in the long term they're going to come down. But it's such a great question. And we're going to paint them this winter in the inside and yeah. try to make them refresh it as best we can with replace your urinal or... Well, I, the, the biggest thing is I want people to know that it's not because we don't love the place. Oh, no. no. It's, oh, no, no, no. it's well used. We, no, no. we can't do but so much. And, and we're not the only community with this. Uh, the last time I knew there was, over fi there was over 500 landfills in the state of North Carolina that need to be closed, officially closed through the state. I would tell you a lot of those landfills have parks sitting on them. So it's not just a Jacksonville problem. You know, it's it's a problem that a lot of communities across the state are, are having to deal with. Well, when, when, are, the, when are feds going to come? When, do you, when, they, when, we, when do we invite them? We're on the list. We're on the list. I mean, that's the best yeah. I can tell you. And, you know, they, you, I would never even begin to tell you that they'd be here in two years. But we don't know when they're coming. No, we don't. When was that started? About two years ago. Actually, it was started. It was actually started. If you'll go back in time a little bit, remember, we had a part of grant for, for Phillips Park. This is how we found out we had to stop. We were going to do great things there. We were going to build an amphitheater there. Who told you to stop? The state? Because of the landfill. That's what stopped the whole thing. And they allot so much funding each fiscal year for so many of those landfills to be closed. And if one landfill is inspected and needs a lot of problems, it could take up all the funding for that one year. So it just varies so it's kind each of, year how many are actually going to get. It's kind of similar to part of. There's only so much money, money. part of can award. Yes. There's only so much money from the environmental side to close. Close them. So we really don't know when these folks. Yeah. No. What? The, the, the question becomes: Is it worth the risk? Only if you don't find anything. Right. <laughs> Dig down nine inches, not twelve. Mr. Ross did his best work at it. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Yes. That's like a second home. Yeah. Yep. And
Sherwood Forest was fine. I checked the water fountain and it worked yes. uh, very well. Although I know there is a time when you're going to cut those off. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it'll be cut off here shortly. We'll cut it off the street and drain it just to make sure. Because even when they're supposed to be anti-frost, last year we learned that's not the case. Yeah. You know. Everything else? Great. Mr. Lane? Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, kudos, congratulations, way <laughs> off the chart, outstanding. But for the for the for the picking up the debris, as everyone has said, I'm pick it back, pick it back, and pick it back. <laughs> it's just, it just was amazing for all the work that be done with the only small personnel that you have. It was it was completely off the chart. Well, congratulations, I mean, amazing, outstanding. It was tremendous. Where everyone said plus or more. Uh, let's go to Wilson Bay Park. Of course, it's. Uh, it's it's really, really good after all to clean up stuff like that. Always, it's very usable, very usable. So it's, it's well, I looked at a lot of things. Um, I didn't see any problem with any of the swings or anything like that. The clean is very outstanding. Uh, I've seen, I seen the trails from the trees, and I went down there, as uh, Mr. Ross has said, and talked to come to the gym. They did an outstanding job. So again, uh, congratulations. Williams Park, one thing I've seen in Williams Park, there's a few of those um, advertisement signs. I'm saying some of the, I don't know if it's part of park regulation, but every type of sign that just came up, they hanging down and stuff like that. Fantastic. And so um, that's that. So try to move quick because everyone says it's a good job. But again, but, and also one other thing, <laughs> Thank you, the collaborations between in the city. Yeah. That is yes. a major thing that, that's, that's, that, I, that I want to go ahead and say congratulations on. Between the departments and stuff like that, because I'm quite sure they can no one get everything done with, on one department. Right. It's collaborations. Right. One God, city, one team. team. Exactly. Yeah. Ain't no I in team. That's right. That's it. Thank you. All right. And uh, the last ones I have are the uh, Riverwalk LP Willingham. And we covered a lot of it. My daughter did notice the Christmas decorations. She was very happy to see those ready. Um, again, the uh, parks were completely cleaned up from what they looked like at that point. We already went over a little bit of it. The tennis courts didn't look nearly as bad as you're coming off with those. They actually held up pretty well. Um, however, the ball field, I know we put a nice little picture up in that presentation. Um, the rains after the hurricane haven't done anything for that ball field either. I went out to walk on it and I was at least shin deep in the mud. So it's more than just a little layer that's going to have to come off. And I'm sure you're going to have to resurface that entire ball field before it's going to go. But uh, all the structure is still standing. Everything is in perfect working order around the field, which is fantastic to see. Um, and the pier, once they got the mud scraped off of it as well too, people are back out on fishing on it again. Uh, the one thing I, everybody's been, you know, talking about the parks and the park staff. Uh, one I wanted to throw out was for the rec staff uh, because the rec centers, uh, most people don't realize. I mean, they're well, at this point in time they were supposed to be set for after school care, and with kids being out of school for what two months now, just it was yeah. about. Yep. So they went back to doing what they did during the summer, so, where the full time right. staff going again, and having some of them shut down or damaged, and they're trying to shift kids from one to the other. I know at least the one at Kerr Street, every time I visited out there, they had kids that normally would go to several different rec centers, and they were all jammed into one of them. And that staff that was over there, they're always volunteers, and they're just, you know, always smiling. They're always having a good time, and they're keeping all the kids busy, even amongst and around the debris, keeping them in whatever safe areas and coming up with the activities for them. So I wanted to make sure the uh, rec staff got a shout out for that as well, too. But aside from uh, that piece of it, I have nothing else for that point. We're just here for the once any moment. Is there anything that we need for that? Uh, it's, it's coming up. So our okay. one city, oh, I need to fast forward through some of this, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wasn't keeping up. <laughs> uh, um, all right, so the one city moment, I think that we um, wanted to do something similar new for us, the city last year. I'm clicking. Um, we participate in the um, parade, holiday parade. It's a it's a great team effort. Lots of us work together, parks crews, recreation crews. We all pitched in um, and put together a really nice uh, presence in the parade. So you can see here, I think that's David driving David that truck. David Michael in the passenger seat. Um, that's their, their vehicle hauling our float in the background. So it's a good team effort. You see Santa's driving our excavator. <laughs> yeah. 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 The yeah. theme this year was uh, March of Toys. So we tried to do that as far as our float goes and have a presence of toys. And then, um, yeah, we've got some neat stuff back there. That's our uh, that's our float. Um, we had uh, all of our staff and kids are in that float dressed up as toys. We even had Ken and Barbie, and I willingly walked. I uh, was not dressing up, so <laughs> I'll leave that to the <laughs> other folks. So they did a great job with decorating, and we'll be using that same float twice um, this weekend at Winterfest for the hayride.
Come on out. <laughs> and then again, that's just another picture of the kids um, and their toys. And there is another one. And then this then, one was orchestrated by Dr. Woodruff. Did a great job with the parks crew. They um, had a great presence. So I, I want to talk <laughs> about this for a minute because the parade, us being in the parade, and, and we weren't the only department by any means when we talk about the one city, our city, my city, but there was a moment during the parade that really exemplifies that. So you see the, the umbrellas and, you know, when you see that first and you got a bunch of maintenance men with these umbrellas doing a, you know, basically a musical as they're walking down Western Boulevard. Uh, choreographed, exactly. Um, what happened was one of the umbrellas broke. See, it might right? be. You can see it right there. You see that guy right there's umbrella broke. And let me tell you what happened. Somebody from the crowd ran out with an umbrella and handed it to him and said, the show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> the fantastic. fact that That's somebody was willing to do that <laughs> lets you know the impact, how important it was to them and how important it was to the people there that you know, hey, this meant a little something, and, and that's a great one city moment right there. So, thank you, whoever that was. Yeah. I don't know who was. She, she was ran out of the crowd. I saw her. She grabbed that and said, Here you go, and keep on going. And she ran back into the crowd, and then he, and he kept on going with the rest of the group. It was great. It's a, it's a well attended parade, um, and we just enjoyed the teamwork and the camaraderie. It's a fun morning for us, so we're able to, you know, get out there in the community. And the routine here was. Fantastic. They did a great Not job. <laughs> Left, right, spin. I mean, that was pretty neat. It was a good job. Good job. In fact, is that Philip right there? No. No, that's no, no, okay. that's one of those All right. there. And then we had the gators with Mickey and Minnie on there and we had a good time. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, there I am. Yeah. There's Scott right there, riding around. A lot of kids look forward to seeing their mowers, but this year they did gators, so maybe next year it'll be mowers. That's right. But it was a nice day and we were glad to do it. So, and the whole Great. city, we were obviously not the only one, so I shouldn't leave out transportation and community center, development. community development. So there's a few other departments, but we're, we were certainly we enjoyed our, and proud of our, so it's a good one city moment. Any last minute questions from the committee? No? All right, uh, the next meeting would be scheduled for January 28, 2019, 6 p.m right here so uh i'm just gonna call and see if we can adjourn the meeting motion, motion. So moved. All right. second all right and all approved or excuse me <laughs> all approved <laughs> all approved let's close the meeting tonight <laughs> all approved <laughs> all right all right let's keep it going all right that's all i have thank, thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.